Hello and welcome back to Linode. In today's video, we're going to check out the bat command. What is the bat command, you might ask? Well, the bat command is actually a replacement for the cat command written in Rust. And if you don't understand why it's written in Rust, then you must not understand Rust because all the cool things nowadays are written in Rust. And the bat command is definitely cool. You could use it to do everything that you would normally use the cat command for, but in addition to that, it has some pretty exciting features. Syntax highlighting is a good example of that. There's also line numbers that's shown in the output of the bat command as well. And it even supports Git integration, which is really cool. So what I'm going to do is show you all about the bat command. I'll first show you how to install the bat command on several distros. After I do that, I'll give you some examples. So let's check it out. As for me, I think one of the best ways to show you why something is better than something else is to actually show you a comparison. Now I'm sure you guys are fully aware of the cat command. Cat itself is a command that's commonly used to view the contents of files. Cat actually is short for concatenate, so its primary purpose is actually to concatenate files. But in reality, it's actually commonly used for just showing the contents of individual files. So let's use the system log as an example. For that, I'm going to need sudo to access that particular log file. And what I'll do is use the cat command. And on an Ubuntu system, the system log is located at slash var slash log slash syslog. But the file doesn't really matter. If you're using a different distribution and you don't have this file, that's totally fine. You could use this against any file. And of course we have all of the text that's included in that particular log file. So I'm not going to go over the contents of the log file, but what we're interested in here is how cat in this case presents the output to the screen. In fact, it doesn't really do much at all, does it? It just displays the contents of the file that you give it as an argument right to the screen. No more, no less. So let's go ahead and change cat to bat. And actually once you have bat installed, the command is going to be bat cat just like that. However, we'll be shortening that later in the video. But anyway, let's go ahead and press enter and you should see the difference right away. Now check this out. We have colorized output, which is really cool. We also have line numbers as well. I can use the left and the right arrow to move left and right and also up and down. So this is actually a really good replacement for cat right here. As you can see, it looks a lot better. I love the way that it presents the information on the screen and I'm probably going to start using this on my end as well. And then once you're done, you just simply press Q to quit out of the batcat command, and then you're back to the terminal. So now that you've seen what batcat can do, how do we install it? Well, let's see what that process looks like. All right, let's go ahead and get bat installed in our system. On my end, I'm actually running Ubuntu 2204, but the bat command is available for multiple distributions. Now, if you're like me and you're also running on Ubuntu, then you can start the process of getting bat installed by running sudo apt update. And that'll make sure that your index of available packages is fully up to date. Once you've done that, you can run sudo apt install and then bat just like that. And if this works, this should give us the bat command. So let's see what happens. And the installation of bat is going to require some dependencies, which the apt command is going to satisfy for us. So I'll press enter to accept the default of yes to get these installed as well. And now we should have batcat installed. In the case of Ubuntu, it's actually going to be batcat. That's the command that we'll be using for the bat command. So as you can see, it's available on this particular system. Now the process that I just showed you again is for Ubuntu 2204. And the same command, sudo apt install bat, that should work just fine on Debian as well. But let's go ahead and see what the process looks like right now on Fedora. In fact, I already have a Fedora instance ready to go. I prepared that off camera. So I'm just going to connect to that instance. And I just pasted in the IP address. So here we go. So all I should have to do is run sudo dnf and then install. And the package name on Fedora is also simply bat. So I'll press enter. And as you can see, it's found the package. So I'll type Y. In this case, Y is lowercase. Unlike in Ubuntu, Y is in caps by default. The caps letter is going to be the default. So I definitely want to press Y here for yes to confirm that I do indeed want to install this particular package. So now it's downloading. 
and now it's installed. And unlike the Ubuntu version, in Fedora, the bat command is actually the bat command, so you don't have to type bat cat. That was the command in Ubuntu. In Fedora, it's actually simply bat, just like that. Now, if you're using Ubuntu, don't worry, we will be simplifying the command down to bat for Ubuntu as well. So stay tuned for that. But let's switch gears and take a look at what this process looks like on Enterprise Linux. I'll be showing you the process on Alma Linux, but you could use the same process on CentOS, Rocky Linux, and a number of others. So let's go ahead and switch over to Alma Linux and I'll show you the process on that distro. So let's go ahead and get bat installed on this server as well. But unlike the others, the process is going to be a bit more manual on Alma Linux when compared to Ubuntu, Debian, or Fedora. Now the first thing we're going to need is the tar command. And in this case, I actually don't have that installed. So let's take care of that. So I'll run sudo dnf install tar. That should be easy enough. And it's found the package, so let's install it. And that was pretty quick. Now the next thing we'll need to know is whether or not our system is 32 or 64 bit. Now the most common architecture is going to be AMD 64, basically 64 bit. And that's probably what you're running as well, especially for newer installations, but let's make sure. And to do that, we could run uname-a. That's going to give us our architecture. So as you can see, we are running on architecture x86 underscore 64. So this is a 64-bit installation of Alma Linux. Now the next thing we'll need is the curl command. So let's see if we have that. And we actually do. If you don't have it, you'll have to install that as well. But since I do have it, let's go ahead and continue. Now that we've verified that we have curl available, let's go ahead and use it to download bat. So I'll type curl and then dash O, which allows us to set a custom output file name. And that'll give us a simpler file name. So I'll call it bat.tar.gz. And then dash capital L, we want to pull it from a location. And I've pasted in a URL right there. That URL goes right to the tar.gz file that we need to download for the bat command. And this particular URL comes from their GitHub page. So if you want to check out their GitHub page, I recommend that you do that. You could also check and see if they have a newer version available, which could be the case by the time you're seeing this video. But anyway, I'll press enter. And as you can see, we have it downloaded. So, so far so good. Next, we'll extract the file that we've just downloaded. We'll use tar for that. That's something that we installed earlier. So just make sure that you have that on your system. We'll use options XVF. And we'll give it the file name that we've just downloaded. So I'll press enter. And as you can see right here, we have a directory. It's a long file name, but let's go ahead and change directory into that folder. And those are the contents right there that we have. So what we're going to do is run sudo mv. We want to move the bat binary. We can see the binary in my case is in green. In my current working directory, I'm inside the directory that we've extracted. So what I want to do is move that and the destination directory where I want to move that to is going to be slash user. User is abbreviated and then local and then bin. I'll press enter and that should be that. Back in my home directory, if I type which and then bat, we can see that it is recognized. It's there in user local bin bat. So from this point forward, I actually should be able to use the bat command here on Alma Linux or whatever enterprise Linux distro I might be using. Now at this point, I've connected to my Ubuntu server and I wanna show you guys how to simplify the bat command on Ubuntu. This should also work for Debian as well. Like I mentioned earlier, if you install the bat command on Ubuntu or Debian, it's actually going to give you the batcat command, which is going to be far longer than just typing bat. Other distributions will simplify this down to bat, but the package maintainers for Ubuntu, for whatever reason, they decided to go a different direction with the name. But what we could do is actually use an alias to use the bat command, even though it's batcat, we could still simplify that. So what we'll do is open up our .bashrc file. That's in the root of our home directory. And then what you do is go all the way to the bottom. And then what we'll do here is we'll type alias. And then we'll type bat. And then we'll set that equal to batcat. 
This way we could actually type the bat command, which is going to be redirected to its actual name, which is batcat. But for our purposes, we only have to remember to type the bat command. So this alias will actually be simplifying that command. Let's save the file, control O and then enter, and then control X to exit out. Now, since I'm already logged in, any changes that we make to our bashrc file is not going to be reflected in our current session. We could simply just log out and then log in again. That would be acceptable. But a faster way is to type exec and then bash. And that'll make sure that we have access to anything that we might have added to our bashrc file. Now that we have bat installed, let's see it in action. What can we do with the bat command? Well, I've already showed you the most basic usage, which is simply to feed it a text file. And you just saw that it gives you colorized output and also line numbers. But there's more to bat than just that. And the example that I want to use is actually going to be within a git repository. So for that, we'll need the git command installed. In my case here on Ubuntu, I already have it. Anyway, if you don't already have the git command available, you can install the package for the git command via your distribution's package manager. I'll leave that up to you. Anyway, let's use git to pull down that repository. So I'll type git and then clone. And then I'll paste the URL right here. And there it is. And that didn't take all that long. So what we'll do is run bat and we'll run it against a file that's within that repository. Specifically, we'll point bat to the flask restful directory inside there. There's actually an examples directory. And inside that directory, there's actually a todo.py file. So let's go ahead and view that file with bat. And I feel like this particular file is a really good example of why bat is so awesome. If I scroll through this particular file, you can see that the syntax highlighting here really shines through. And when you see output like this from a command like bat, then in my opinion, it makes it really hard to go back to the cat command. But now what I'm gonna do is show you some additional examples. So again, it's Q to break out of the output there. And as you saw, when I entered that command, it allowed me to scroll through the file. I was able to press up and down. And that's not quite the same thing as the cat command because the cat command shows you all of the output all at once. It just drops it right to the terminal. And then you go back to the command prompt. The thing is, if you want that same functionality with the bat command, then you could absolutely do that. So what I'll do is recall the previous command. It was this one right here. We're going to add another option to it. We're going to set paging to never, just like that. And when I enter this command, watch what happens. Like I mentioned, it just dumped everything to the screen. The output looks the same. We still get the colorized output. We get the line numbers and things like that. But we were able to replicate the same behavior of the cat command, but with the added features of the bat command. Another feature that I would like to show you with the bat command is that you could actually use it to view non-printable characters. For example, white space. So I'll bring back the previous command and here it is. And then what I'll do is change the option right here. We were using paging equals never. What I'm going to do instead is type dash dash show dash all, and that should show all characters. I'll press enter. And now, as you can see, there's some additional characters that didn't show up the first time around. For example, we have dots instead of spaces and so on. As we scroll through the file, you'll see more of these characters. So if you wanted to see however many spaces an indent actually has, then this is one way that you could do that. If nothing else, you now know that this is possible with the bat command. Now the next feature that I would like to show you is the ability for the bat command to notice when changes are made to a file that's in version control. So what we'll do to illustrate the next example is we'll open that same file, that todo.py file, into an editor. I'll use nano even though that really doesn't matter. And then what we'll do is just go into the examples directory just like we did before. And we're going to open the todo.py file. Now what we're going to do here is just make a change. It doesn't really matter what change we make. We don't want to break this file or anything. So if you don't know Python, what we could do is look for a comment or something like that. But actually we could simply just type a comment. That would be acceptable. And that would be a legitimate change. So I made a change to the file. Let's go ahead and save it. And then we'll exit out. And now that we've made that change, let's use the bat command to open up that file yet again. So I'll type bat. And our file was underneath the flask restful directory underneath examples. And there it is. 
And what you'll notice here is that there's some plus symbols to the left of the change that we've made. There's actually two. I've only made one change, but that one change actually resulted in two lines being changed. We have the comment that I typed, and then we also have a blank line underneath that comment. So the plus symbols there actually tell us that something has been added. And that's actually taking into account the information in the Git repository itself, because we downloaded a Git repository, all the changes are tracked, and then we made a test change by adding this comment. And apparently Bat is smart enough to understand that there's been a change based on the current version compared to the old version, or the one that we've downloaded. And then it shows the plus symbols to let us know that. So there you go. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you guys. And if you're like me, you're probably installing the bat command on every Linux server and workstation that's under your jurisdiction because it's just that awesome. Did you enjoy this video? If you did, then please consider clicking that like button because that'll let YouTube know that we need to see more Linux related content on YouTube. That'd be really cool. In the meantime, please subscribe if you haven't already done so and I'll see you again very soon. Thanks for watching.